there are many topologies available to design one power solution any design technique can be made possible for any specification but each topology has its own features some topologies are easier to design some has fewer components and some are complex to control some topologies provide isolation between input power and output power selection of topology depends mainly on given application specification the major factors that contribute in the selection of most suitable topology for given specification are power requirement input to output isolation size and cost and finally the efficiency design simplicity compact solution size lower cost and high efficiency have not been effectively combined in one solution and typically require trade offs between one for another in today's modern world efficiency cost and compact size have become dominating factor in selection of appropriate topology modern switching algorithms have made it possible to develop high efficiency and compact size power converters by increasing frequency one possible solution is the flyback topology because of its simplicity low parts count and hence the low cost in low power application flyback is the best and widely used transformer isolated topology compared to its counterparts selection of high performance component and appropriate control algorithm make its efficiency comparable with other topologies in this lecture we shall discuss linear power supplies and switch mode power supplies their advantages and drawbacks and we shall discuss various isolated switch mode dc dc converter topologies isolated power converter topologies can be classified as either single ended or double ended depending on the usage of bh curve during the operation if the flux swings in only one quadrant of bh curve then topology is classified as single ended if the flux swings in two quadrant of bh curve then topology is classified as double ended for a given set of requirements a double ended topology requires a smaller core than a single ended topology and does not need additional reset winding naturally single ended topologies are more adequate for low power applications while double ones are good for high power converter circuits these isolated converter topologies are derived from the basic buck and boost converter topologies in the linear power supplies series bus transistor is used to regulate the output voltage the transistor is operated in linear region to provide the regulated output voltage v out at load side in these uh, power supplies a control circuit is used where the output voltage is compared to the desired output voltage and thereby and output voltage is regulated by adjusting the base current of the transistor the corresponding input output waveforms of the linear power supply are shown in the figure we have already discussed this linear power supply in our earlier lectures here we shall discuss the advantages and disadvantages of linear power supplies the linear power supply have a simple circuit since there is no switching in the linear power supplies therefore there will be a very less or negligible electromagnetic interference these power supplies are less expensive up to 25 watt application however they have some disadvantages that at the input side we use a 
bulky 50 to 60 hertz power transformer so for very at very low switching frequency the transformer size becomes very bulky and the typical energy efficiency range of our linear power supplies is 30 to 60 percent because the power uh, the power semiconductor devices are operated in linear region that is why we have very low uh, energy efficiency in these power supplies and there are high losses because of linear mode operation of the transistor electromagnetic interference is a major concern in the design of high frequency switch mode power supplies in our last six to eight lectures we shall discuss electromagnetic interference in detail the transistors are the power semiconductor devices operate as a switch as a result there exist high rate of change of voltage or current in these power supplies high dv by dt and high di by dt in combination with high frequency high switching frequency causes electromagnetic interference to suppress conducted emi line filters are used in almost all switch mode power supplies emi filter is followed by a rectifier plus a capacitor to obtain unregulated dc voltage from ac mains in case of these switch mode power supplies to obtain regulated output voltage from unregulated output voltage a dc dc conversion block which provides isolation between source and load is designed as shown in the figure this block is encircled in the pink box it consists of high frequency switching devices such as mosfets igbts etc and passive components such as high frequency transformer with suitable turn ratio the transformer provides isolation and step up step down conversion ratio depending on the load voltage requirements it consists of secondary side rectifier and filter unit in order to regulate the output voltage for both line and load variations a control unit is required where pulse width modulation technique it is utilized in this lecture we shall discuss about various isolated dc dc converter topologies for achieving the regulated output dc voltage from unregulated input voltage Design of flyback converter needs in-depth understanding across entire components and disciplines. For example, BH loop characteristics of transformer, switching behavior of power switches, output diodes or switches, and impedance of capacitors at switching frequency. In addition to components behavior, flyback design requires understanding of control theory as well as principles of switching power supply theory. Flyback converter is an isolated version of buck boost converter. In this converter, isolation between primary and secondary is provided by coupled inductor. The energy is stored in the inductors, unlike the transformer where energy is transferred from primary to secondary at the same instant of time. In this converter, current does not flow in primary and secondary winding simultaneously. The circuit diagram of the flyback converter is shown in the figure. It consists of single switch uh, switching device S uh, diode D, coupled inductor TX and filter capacitor at the secondary side. The flyback is the most widely used converter topology for the output power level up to 150 watt. During continuous conduction mode, it is assumed that there is incomplete demagnetization of 
core before start of next cycle. During on state of the switch, the energy is stored in the primary winding of the coupled inductor. The voltage across primary winding is equal to the input DC voltage by considering ideal behavior of the devices. The current starts to increase linearly and corresponding current path is highlighted in the figure. Since it is considered that converter is operating in continuous conduction mode, the inductor core possesses an initial flux known as remnant flux or residual flux and increases linearly as given by the equation. During switch on period, diode is reverse biased due to reverse polarity of the secondary winding and filter capacitor provides power to the load. The polarity dots on the transformer and diode are arranged such that there is no energy transferred to the load when switch S is on. When the switch S is turned off, the polarity of the tra transformer winding reverses due to collapsing magnetic field. The output rectifier diode becomes forward biased and energy stored in the core material is transferred to the load. The voltage across secondary winding is the negative output voltage equal to minus V out. Flux starts decreasing linearly as given by the equation. The current path during this time interval is highlighted in the figure. Under steady state conditions, as we know that the average voltage across inductor over a switching time period is zero. The voltage across primary winding, flux and diode current waveforms of flyback converter in continuous conduction mode are shown in the figure. The voltage conversion ratio of the flyback converter is given by the equation which resembles the voltage conversion ratio of the buck boost converter. Hence, we can say that the flyback converter is an isolated version of buck boost converter. The stress on MOSFET during off state is given as in the equation by neglecting the leakage inductance of the transformer. If we consider the practical transformer, it consists of leakage inductance which increases the stress on the switching devices such as MOSFETs and IGBTs. Therefore, to reduce the switch stress, a dissipative snubber circuit which consists of resistors, capacitors and diodes can be placed across the primary winding. However, the snubbers reduce the energy efficiency of the converter due to losses of snubber circuit components. Therefore, in order to avoid dissipative snubber circuits and reduce stress on MOSFETs by half, a two-switch flyback converter topology as shown in the figure can be implemented. Two switches turn on and off simultaneously and hence the energy is stored in the primary winding of the flyback converter. When both are turned off, the secondary side diode is forward biased and energy is transferred to the load. Leakage inductance energy is transferred to the source side without any need of snubber circuit elements as in the case of single switch flyback converter.